Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. Spinner. Welcome to Notebook, a guide to art, culture and tourism in Tokyo. My name's Stuart Monroe and around this time each Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I'll bring news and views from Japan. And with the return of inbound travel, I'll also note any change to outbound travel as and when they happen. North Korea fired more than 20 ballistic missiles and 100 artillery projectiles yesterday at waters close to South Korea. Three missiles, including one ICBM intercontinental ballistic missile, were fired from the North Korean capital of Pyongyang towards Japan on Thursday, before abruptly falling into the sea off the Korean coastline. It was exactly one month ago that North Korea fired what was suspected to be another long-range ICBM over Japan, the first of its kind since 2017, and most likely a protest against joint drills held each year between South Korea and the US Navy. Japan's close proximity to these and its perceived cooperation easily place it within North Korean crosshairs. Parts of Niigata, Yamagata and Miyagi prefectures saw trains temporarily brought to a halt Thursday morning over fears one of these missiles would pass overhead. But reports now suggest their short flight may have been due to mid-flight technical error. It's been unusually warm this week and seen people gather in the unlikeliest of places. Monday's note reported on 178 people all named Hirokazu Tanaka attempting to break the Guinness World Record for the largest gathering of people with the same name. As well as the reopening of Ueno Park's National Museum of Western Art, designed by Le Corbusier, as the park's zoo celebrates the first pandas brought to Japan 50 years ago. Wednesday's note was less grounded by events and more concerned with spaces of fiction reporting on NEUU, a new game centre on the west side of Shinjuku Station, where visitors can experience exile across reality to gloss over the redevelopment of the Odaku department store being demolished in preparation for a new skyscraper earmarked to open in 2029. The same note also looked at films from this year's Tokyo International Film Festival, which ended that same day, with Simon Lang's 2003 film Goodbye Dragon Inn tale of one man's attempt to pick up strangers at an old Taiwanese picture house as it screens its final film, an old wuxia martial arts classic. The few people in attendance seem haunted by memories brought forth by the cinema now leaking water as it pours with rain outside. Today's note looks at Art Week Tokyo as a way of distinguishing the city from other cultural capitals around the world. 51 galleries, museums and experimental art spaces open their doors to visitors over four days, tackling the sprawling art scene which even for people living here can be a challenge. AWT revolves around a special bar in central Aoyama, but its spiritual home is found at the National Museum of Modern Art or MoMAT, with the eponymous exhibition by the Japanese artist Shinro Otake, a show of 500 works spanning more than 40 years, drawing from Kurt Switters to kinetic sculpture in the punk culture of 1970s. From the 1970s onwards, Otaki's series of over 60 scrapbooks, collaged with images from American comics and magazines to receipts, flyers and travel tickets, are even scaled to become architectural. The prefab summer cottage turned audiovisual scrapbook Mon Cherie, commissioned for Documenta 13 in 2012 and installed in Castle's Karl Söhl Park in Germany. While that work seemed to respond to the environmental disasters of the last decade with steam seen rising from the shed, the title Mon Cherie appears in the more angular Japanese katakana script on neon signage taken from an out-of-business snack bar in Uejima. Things like these taken out of place might appear as one thing but could easily be another. As the critic Noi Sawaraki describes, a disagreement between critics over the nature of Otaki's work its ideas of romantic nostalgia against the violence of history. 
The writer Roske Kano pictures what he describes as otake's trash, where everything is equal and nothing sticks out. Critic Hidemi Suga, on the other hand, finds fault with Otaki for not, as he puts it, expressing the wreckage of the past, akin to the German painter and sculptor Anselm Kiefer, known for his own severe and monumental vision. In Sawaragi's eyes, nostalgia is less about the past and more about the present, and in a musical sense closer to a suspended note held in a state of perpetual tension. It's not as if Otaki doesn't respond to history, there's plenty of that on display, From the very first sculpture he made after moving to Uojima in the south of Japan almost 30 years ago, to photographs taken in London when he travelled there almost 40 years ago. Instead of describing the past, they're shaped by it. In fact, Sawaragi describes how his works are more like pebbles cast aside, formed by erosion and vividly remembered in colour and detuned by sound. A satellite show at Ginza Atrium within the Satai bookstore at Ginza 6 takes it step one step further. Print works made from copper etchings are hung in luminous frames. It's as if my neurons link directly to my fingertips, says Otake, describing the etching process and how a simple line can start soft and become violent when copper corrodes. Shinro Otake, the Tokyo National Museum of Modern Art in Takeshiba, continues until next February 2023, while Art Week Tokyo comes to an end this Sunday. That's all for now. I'll be back for next week's first instalment on Monday, November the 7th. If you enjoyed this episode, you might consider rating us on Apple Podcasts or even think about spreading the word online. Until then, thanks for listening. This is Notebook. Notebook.